announcing the arrival of your honorable Mr. Prem Rawat, the ambassador of peace. On behalf of the Scout Association of Malaysia, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to all of you, especially to Mr. Prem Rawat, the guest speaker of our intellectual discourse program this afternoon. I would like to thank you, Mr. Prem Rawat, for kindly be a part of this momentous occasion. I am very delighted that all of us in this hall are looking forward to share your experiences and knowledge. I believe every one of us is aware peace is a prerequisite for the achievement of sustainable development. Therefore, on this International Day of Peace, which has fallen on 21st September 2014, let us today rededicate ourselves to the pursuit of peace across the world. I fully hope the peace bell will send a message of peace loud and clear across the world and the people affiliated by the scourge of violence conflict deserve to live in peace. Let me introduce you to our speakers today. It now gives me a great pleasure to welcome to the stage our keynote speaker today, Peace Ambassador and honored friend of Malaysia, Prem Rawat. But before he speak, I would like to take and to give you a short intro introduction of him. And his first published speech was given when he was only four years old. My goodness. He decided to travel from his home in India to accept speaking invitation in London and the US during his school holidays. From that moment on, he has never looked back and has been traveling the world ever since, reminding people of the importance of peace in their lives. Ram Rawat is currently a patron of a Global Food and Sustainability Award project with Her Royal Highness Princess Basma binti Ali of Jordan. The Water and Food Awards seek to focus our attention on environmental projects that can best restore and repair our damaged ecosystem. In 2011, Prem was the keynote speaker at the European Parliament where the first ever EU peace declaration was signed. Entitled The Pledge to Peace Brussels Declaration, this initiative is a call to peaceful action with projects from all over Europe. The Brussels Declaration was directly inspired by Prem Rawat and his peace efforts. This year alone, Prem has already spoken to live audiences of over one million people at 45 events around the world. Give a clap, please. In 2001, Prem Rawat founded the Prem Rawat Foundation, a US-based charity that has provided millions of dollars in humanitarian aid, giving hundreds of thousands of people in need essential food and water across five continents. The foundation flagship, Peace Education Program, is based on Prem Rawat's talks has impacted people from all walks of life, from war veterans to students, prisoners to elderly, improving the quality of their lives and their understanding of peace. Prem has received numerous awards, 
but particularly notable is the award he received here in Malaysia in 2012, the International Brand Laureate Lifetime Achievement Award for Services to Peace, an award that has been given to only to three other people, including the late Nelson Mandela and Hillary Clinton. Prem Rawat. <clears throat> Prem Rawat married with four grown-up children and one grandchild. is also a highly experienced jet pilot with over 13,000 hours flying time. Earlier this year, when speaking at the British Parliament hosted by the former UK Attorney General, Baroness Scotland, Prem Rawat said, peace will be humanity's greatest achievement. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Prem Rawat. Thank you, please. Tan Sri Dr. Shafi Saleh, Vice Principal Mr. Halim, fellow scouts and students, distinguished guests. It's a great pleasure to be here to address you. And I would like to just add one thing. And I will give you a story. And perhaps that's the best way to put it. Would you like to hear a story? Yeah. Okay. So there was a man, and he would go from village to village, and he was an expert marksman. He would take his bow, he would take his arrow, he would shoot. And repeatedly, he could shoot the bullseye, he could shoot the arrow that he had shot and split it in two. He was really good. And he would go from village to village, and people would applaud him, people would gather around, watch. And he was, you know, he would get his money, he would make his living that way. One day, Whilst he was doing this, he hears a voice in the back. And the voice says, oh, it's just a matter of practice. So the guy takes out another arrow and shoots it. Everybody applauds. And again, the same voice, hey, this is nothing. It's just a matter of practice. Well. Every time the marksman heard this being said, it really irritated him because he thought he was the greatest. And somebody belittling him by saying, it's just a matter of practice, it's just a matter of practice. After the exhibition was over, the man went to see who was saying this. He comes across, and there's a guy. He has a pole. He has two big clay pots full of oil and a few bottles, empty bottles. And he is an oil salesman. He sells oil. He goes over to him and says, every time I shot the arrow, you would say it's just a matter of practice. Why are you belittling me? He says, listen, it really is a matter of practice. The guy said, how can that be? I mean, this is my task. This is what I can do. He says, no, it's a matter of practice. So he asked him, what do you mean? He said, let me show you. So he took the bottle. And he had an old coin, the coin that used to have a hole in it. 
He put that coin on top of the bottle. He picked up the big clay pot and without spilling a drop from the big clay pot, he filled the bottle of oil, not even touching the coin. Then he turned to the archer and said, now you do it. The archer understood that it really was a matter of practice. So why did I tell you this story? Because my question to you is this, what do you practice? Whatever you practice, you are going to get good at it. Do you practice anger? But let me ask you, how long does it take you to get angry? Not very long, does it? Something happens, boom, and you're angry. Look at the, look at the streets. Look at the streets. Somebody in the traffic jam cuts the wrong way. We are trying around the world with people who have the same spirit as you to better our society, to better our country. And I say to you that if you truly want to succeed in doing that, you have to begin with yourself. You have to begin Practicing those traits that will bring you peace. Peace is not a state of vegetable. A lot of people think that's what peace is. Oh, if I get peace, then I won't, do, I won't do anything. I would never go to the movies. I would never go for a picnic. I would just sit there in my house and go, okay, I'm in peace, I'm in peace. I'm in peace. That's not peace. Peace is when you are whole. Peace is when you are complete. Peace is when you understand. Peace is when you, you have truly accomplished the basic traits of being human. Completeness. Not emptiness, but completeness. It's not about fear. It's not about anger. It's about the choices you make in your life. Now, quite a few young kids over there, and they're younger than the one sitting on this side looks like. Do you know that you're going to have to make choices? All your life, you're going to have to make choices. And the choice is your weapon. The choice is your weapon against ignorance. The choice is your weapon against all the things that you don't want. Choice is the weapon that can save you. Choice is the weapon that can bring people together. Choice is the glue that can make people join each other. Choice of the nations will determine the destiny of those nations. This is what history teaches us. Those countries that had everything, had everything, but did not choose wisely, ended up being decimated. 
those civilizations, even though they had achieved the zenith, but did not choose wisely, ended up being decimated. And those who chose wisely have stood the test of time. Do you know how to choose? Do you know how to choose? Because if you're not good at choices, what choices are you going to make? I remember going to school, and then the time would come for exam. Right? You know about that, right? It's called the exam time. I think it's what's going on now. So, Everybody, study, 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 and the parents at home, study, 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 pay attention, study, 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 study. And then the day will come when you have to take the test, and your heart will go dunk, 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 and then you will have the questions in front of you. And you will look at the questions, and you will go, uh-oh. Why? Why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because the whole year, the choice you made was not to pay attention. Oh, over there, looking over there. Oh, let's see this. Oh, yeah, that's happening. Let's... And then, this could be the other way. Where you come for the test, you are relaxed because you know. You look at the questions, your heart isn't going dunk, dunk, dunk. It's piping down, and you have a smile on your lips because you know the answers. It all depends on the choice you make. If you are not happy with your life, don't blame government. Don't blame God. Don't blame your relatives. It's the choices you make. And you are where you are because of the consequences of the choices you make. Every day in our life, every day in our life, we have to face choices. To choose. And this is what I say to the whole world. Choose clarity over doubt. Choose clarity over doubt. Choose strength over weakness. Choose wisdom. Choose wisdom in your life. And then, I truly feel, I truly feel that this would be a different world. Right now, people are ready to fight each other. They, some people don't even know why they're fighting, but they are ready to fight. What is the purpose? What is the consequence? What does a war bring? People think war brings victory. It doesn't bring victory. It brings disaster. Because for generations to come, the hatred between people would be perpetuated. The veterans, the soldiers arriving home are decimated. Where they put their life on the line, they come home and they can't even find a job. They can't even find a job. There is nobody to hold their hand and say, you know what? There is life ahead of you. Innocent children Innocent people, innocent families will be decimated. 
Why? Why? What everything that I have just told you what a war brings, history proves it. That's what happens. And why do we keep choosing war over peace? Because maybe we don't understand that peace is a fundamental requirement of a human being. You need air to breathe. You need water to drink. You need food to sustain yourself. You need peace to be complete, to be human, to be human. That's what it means. Who are you? Who are we? Oxygen? Hydrogen? Carbon? Calcium? Nitrogen? Phosphorus. 99% of a human being is made up of these. Have you ever talked to oxygen? Have you? Have you ever talked to oxygen? Hello, oxygen, how are you today? Have you gotten a reply? Would you give a little bit of calcium a name? Would you, would you really give a little bit of calcium a name? Let me call you Prem. Let me call you John. Let me call you David. But these same elements come together, and here we are, a living human being. What is it to be human? What is it to be human? What is it to be human? What you see with your eyes as a person, that's just these 99% of these elements of oxygen and hydrogen and calcium and carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus. But that's not what makes a human a human. What makes human a human is who they are. What, for that moment, for that period of time that that oxygen and nitrogen and all of that is talking, can talk, can walk, can smile, can smell, can love, can hate. What does it choose to do? What does it choose to do. If it decides to love, if it decides to be in peace, if it decides to care, if it decides to be kind, if it decides to be gentle, if it decides to be generous, it becomes a human being. If it decides not to be that, then it is simply a burden on the face of this earth. It was dust once. It'll go back to being dust. Time would have forgotten. And that's it. If you want to be rich, learn how to be generous. That's what will make you rich. If you want to be strong, you know, strong, learn to be gentle. That'll make you strong. If you want to be knowledgeable, learn simplicity, and you will become very intelligent. This is what it takes. Let's not be caught in the cycle, because I have a quote. 
which I just wrote a couple of days ago. <laughs> I have to put it up on my website. Yesterday's ignorance is today's arrogance. Oh, yes, we, we did this and we did this. It's coming from an ignorant place, and today there's arrogance. Once somebody went to a wise man and said, how do I become wise? So the wise man says, when a wise man talks, listen. And listen when you talk and somebody else is listening to what you are saying. You listen to the wise man, but to be truly wise as well, listen to yourself talking. Listen to yourself talking. What are you saying? What are you expressing? What do your actions mean? What do your words mean? What does your expression mean? You know, there's people who want to be wealthy. They think that's the answer. So, there have been many, many wealthy people on the face of this earth. Many. They were the pharaohs, right? They were super wealthy. What happened? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? What happened to them? What is all their wealth? all their servants, all their assets, everything they had. What, what, where are they? Where is it? Somebody once told me, a, a Chinese astrologer once told me I was an emperor in my life, last lifetime. Said, For a minute, I was very happy. I was like, wow, this is very impressive, I'm an emperor. Thought about it, and it's like, what good does that do you? You can't go to the bank and say, hey, give me money, I'm the emperor. I can't do that. Today, you have to understand true wealth. Your true wealth is peace, is understanding, is clarity, it's your strength. And if you can have that in your life, you truly have everything. Peace does not begin out there. Peace begins with you, always has, and always will. Thank you very much. With great respect and regard, I call upon Mr. Thank Prem Rawat, the Ambassador of Peace, to receive the Messenger of Peace Cup and the Friendship Award. Let's give an applause. Questions to Prem Rawat? I told him just now that if you wear a scarf, you're a scarf. So please don't be afraid to ask from your brother. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Barao, uh, Mr. Rawat. Uh, there is so many conflicts in this world. And as a student in Malaysia, uh, do you have an advice on how can we be Messages of peace. Thank you. I, uh, I have traveled the world, and I find that people who are interested in peace, it doesn't matter what religion they follow, 
they understand that they are the gift of the Almighty. And they believe in the Almighty. They have every right to believe in the Almighty however they want to believe in the Almighty. So I do not look at religion as an obstacle to anyone. So far my advice to all the people is if you truly want to respect God, Allah, Bhagavan, whatever you call, begin with respecting each other. We are the fruits of that tree. You cannot respect the tree if you don't respect the fruit of that tree. It's very, very important because more and more lines and boundaries are being created by some people of the world who do not represent the true feelings of human beings across the world, whether they are following a Muslim religion, whether they are following Christianity, whether they are Buddhist, it doesn't matter. They all are trying to connect with that divine. And so, if these lines can be eliminated and everybody can just respect each other and respect each other's religion and respect every human being, I think we will fundamentally see a very different world. You know, a very, very, very different world. Uh, I just would like all the religions to add one thing to whatever they teach. And I say this at many, many of my conferences. That if you want to go to heaven, the only way you're going to get in heaven is if you make it heaven here as well. If this could be added, if this could be added, it would be great. It would really be great because this would be a different world. People would stop dividing. I, I, I have been coming to Malaysia since a long time. And I remember when I first came, there were no traffic jams. There was a very few buildings and there were no traffic jams. And I, I fell in love with this place. I fell in love with the people and I saw how beautiful they were, how simple they were. And there were all these different nationalities and they were blending together, they were being, they were existing. And uh, I have just watched that grow and grow and grow and grow. I mean, now I, there's a lot of buildings, there's a lot of progress, there's a lot of traffic jam. But there is a beauty that the human beings here have. Don't lose that. Don't lose that in the name of progress. Don't lose that in the name of all the other things. Don't, you know, there's the Western world and everybody looks to the West. We want to be like them. They don't look at anybody. <laughs> and sometimes they don't even look at themselves to say, you know, we should be a little bit better. Uh, harmony. Harmony begins in family, where there is a respect for the father, and the father respects the children. It, 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 this is very, very important. You know, you know what the disease of, 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 the, of the Western world is? The modern world is? No listening. Father doesn't listen to the children. Children don't listen to the father. Mother doesn't listen to it to father, father doesn't listen to mother, mother doesn't listen to children, children don't listen to, children don't listen to the teachers, teachers don't listen to the children, uh, the, the governments don't listen to the citizens, citizens don't listen to the government, and there you have it. And all it takes is listening. All it takes is listening. If everybody in this world did one thing, every day that you wake up, try this. Every day, today, say to yourself, I will make a heaven for someone, even if it's just for five seconds. Just five second heaven. I call it five second heaven. Make it a heaven for your father for five seconds. Just five seconds. Make it a heaven for your mother for just for five seconds. And ask your father to make it a heaven for you just for five seconds. 
It doesn't stay, have to stay at five seconds. It can keep increasing. But start from that. Your neighbor, the person on the road, the person that you want to, you know, throw something at, just look at him with kindness. Just five second heaven. Begin with little things. We are human beings. We can achieve a lot. But if we cannot achieve peace amongst ourselves, this will be all gone. You know, there are scientists. They're looking for life out there. You know that, right? They're sending spaceships. They're sending all these things. And they're looking for life. I have a message for them. I know where there is life. It's right here. Look here. There's life. They went to the moon only to find out no life. Mars, no life. But I know where there is life. Let's go to the planets. Let's explore the universe after we have taken care of our brothers and sisters. This is all. I, <laughs> you know, I, I love gadgets like anybody else. I, I, I love gadgets like anybody else. I fly plane. The, the plane that I fly right now is one of the most modern airplanes there is. It flies at 90% the speed of sound, has almost 6,000 nautical mile range. You can go from Malaysia to Los Angeles in it nonstop if you wanted to. It flies as high as 51,000 feet. So I'm not against technology. But I'm also for let's use the technology to take care of the basic needs of people. To feed them. To take care of them. You don't know the power of one time meal. I do. It's amazing. There's a lot of hope. There is a lot of we can do, and we really need to do it. So there was an excellent question you have. And, and truly, we need to start recognizing as hu human beings as human beings. And it's very, very important. So that's my answer to it. <laughs> OK. Mr. Hawad. In our world today, usually it is the adult who make big decision. Do you think young people like me have a role to play? Thank you. Of course. Because all those adults were once your age. You are at the doorway, when you learn to make correct choices, you too will be an adult one day. You too will be an adult one day, and that adult will be making good choices because he started at your age learning how to make good choices. And that adult, my friend, could be the one that changes this world. You never know who it is. It could be anyone. Anyone. But learn to make a difference. When you learn today to make a difference. Have you ever seen in a garden, sometimes where the vines grow, they put a piece of wood to train the vine to grow a particular way? Have you seen that? Well, why do that? Why not just wait till it's all big? No, it's too late then. You have to teach it at that right age where it still is supple. You have a huge contribution. You have a huge contribution because you have so much time ahead of you. you. You are the foundation. 
You are the horizon. You are the horizon. Bring us all peace. Bring us all hope. Bring us all this beautiful feeling where we can be living together and be proud to be called humans. Because today, if somebody came from the outer, outer world, they would give us very bad marks. I mean, you know, we don't understand. They have been looking for life outside for tens of years, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And they have come to one conclusion. There's nobody out there. They're still looking. We are it. We are it. We are who we are and we have got each other. And when we are it, we better learn. Better learn. If we're going to share the same room, we better learn to live with each other not quarrel and argue and do those things. And those are the seeds that you carry in your hand, that you carry in your heart. Please sow them so there will be more trees that will bear the fruit of unity, of peace, and prosperity. Because that's what's really, really important. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prem. That was a really wonderful speech that uh, I have ever seen. I think all the audience are very happy and grateful to have you with us. My name is uh, Dr. Zain. I was in the military for 30 years. I'm a medical doctor. Before I ask questions, I would like to uh, tell a joke since we started with a joke. But this joke is in a form of poetry which I learned a long time ago when I was a schoolboy. It is a poem called The Cool Mountain Breeze. It goes like this. The higher the mountains, the colder the breeze. The colder the breeze, the harder you sneeze. The harder you sneeze, the more germs you release. The more germs you release, the more infectious the disease. The more infectious the disease, the more the disease. The more the disease, the greater is the chance for peace. So I learned that many years ago, suddenly I reminded, <laughs> I, I, I remind, uh, remember the poem again this uh, afternoon. So my question is, you are talking about world peace. World peace starts with nation, starts with the state, starts with the district, starts with the village, starts with the society, with the families, and it really starts with the individual. It is the individual normally that declares war, only the president, the king, the general. It's the individual. So my question is, is there a syllabus, a curriculum that can foster this uh, sense of peacefulness within an individual, rather yes. than talking about, big about the whole world? Thank you. Actually, um, I never did say world peace. I just said peace, because I know world doesn't need peace. We're the only things that need peace. We're the, if there is no world peace, it's because of us. Because we're not in peace, we bother the crows, we bother the cats, we bother the cows, we bother the trees, we bother the sky, we bother the ocean, we bother the rivers, we bother the mountains, we bother even ourselves. Peace has to be felt in the heart of every human being. That's where peace resides, that's the platform of peace. Peace doesn't dance on your nose. Peace doesn't dance on your hair. Peace doesn't dance on your lips. It dances in your heart. Peace doesn't have to be brought. It already is within every single human being. It needs to be discovered. It's not that, that you have to go to a mountain and you don't have to sneeze because the peace is already there. We are not looking at ourselves as the resource for that peace. Either we are looking for the angel to come from the sky and, 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 and wave the magic wand. So you know what my saying to that is? 
The angel has come. The angel that you're waiting for has come. But you know who that angel is? It's you. You have come. And you may not be able to make a change in somebody else's life, but you can make a change in your life. That angel has come. And it's you. Now angel, look at yourself. Look within you to find that peace. Look within you. Begin with understanding the simplest of thirst. What have you always wanted in your life? When do you feel the best? Do you feel good when you're angry? Do you feel good when you are bothered? Or do you feel good when you are in peace? That's when we feel good. That's when we feel good. Because that is our nature. And until we start looking at ourselves as the source of that peace, Stop looking at other people because that's a blame game. I'm not in peace because of you. I'm not in peace because of you. I'm not. It's not going to work. Begin with you. Begin with you. And that's where it begins. And yeah, people have their ideas of world peace. When I first started, I, I, I also had the idea, world peace, world peace, world peace. Then one day I thought about it and I said, well, the world doesn't need peace. People need peace. Wherever I go, I see people. I see people, I see people, I see people, I see people. So peace is within you, always has been, always will be. But until you start seeing yourself as the source of that peace, nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen. It is not doing something, but it is starting to look at yourself as the source. As the source. You are the source of your sorrow. You are the source of your anger. You are the source of your frustration. You are the source of your cruelty. And you are the source of your peace. Pay attention. Pay attention to you. Pay attention to you. And you will see a simplicity. You will see how that most divine truly has touched you with peace. You will see. So yes, peace begins with you. Absolutely. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm Jessica. Um, because like very often, when uh, we couldn't find the peace in us when we are making the decisions, because like the decision will uh, is related to the dream and also the reality. So how could we find the peace um, when we are making the decision? Thank you. Well, peace needs to be there when you are making a decision and when you're not making a decision. You need to feel complete, you need to feel whole. Not just when you are driving or when you have your job, you need to feel whole all day, every day, not just on Sundays. So, the source of peace is also inside of you. It is you taking the focus, because right now, where is your focus? It's in everything, everything else. What does my mother think about me? What does my father think about me? What does my boyfriend think about me? What am I going to be doing today? What does my SMS say? What does my email say? 
who has called me, who hasn't called me. You know, somebody who has called me is my friend. Somebody who hasn't called me for a long time is not my friend. I need to go shopping. I need to buy this. I need to do that. I need to have this responsibility. I need to take care of that person. I need to do... And, and you? Where are you? Where are you? When was the last time you SMSed yourself? If somebody doesn't write to you, doesn't call you, you're not going to call, they, they're not going to be your friends for very long. Hey, how come you didn't call me? How come you don't talk to me? And what's your communication with you? None. None. And you are not your friend, but everybody else's friend. Do you know how to talk to you? It's done silently. It's done with kindness. It's done with understanding. It's done with simplicity. Me. I have been given this gift. What were you before? You were alive. What were you? I'll tell you, you were dirt for billions of years. 4.95 billion years old the earth is, but for billions of years, you were dirt. What's going to happen to you? Do you know? You're going to be dirt again. For how long? For billions of years. But right now, this dirt talks, smiles, so the the, the dirt talks, smiles, laughs, cares. You, right now, are an exception. The norm is the dirt. Right now, you are the exception. And it is up to you to make this exception exceptional and it begins with accepting the gift that the divine has bestowed upon you from dirt not dirt this is a gift being alive So, send yourself an SMS of understanding. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to lead the official signing of the Pledge to Peace, I address the Honorable Tan Sri Datuk Sri Paduka Dr. Haji Shafi'i bin Haji Muhammad Saleh from the Scout Associations of Malaysia and Mr. Prem Rawat from the Prem Rawat Foundation. Please give a round of applause to the team. Thank you, Your Honorable Tansri and Mr. Prem.